My name is Julia Wolf and I work for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. I'm a nature resource officer and I'm coordinating a program that is called Integrating Agriculture and National Adaptation Plans. Climate change is already affecting um, food security in a, in a very substantive way. The, the poorest uh, and most vulnerable people are hit as hardest and uh, geographically most of the storms and hazards are happening in um, least developed countries um, in the tropics. Um, so there also is where the incidence of undernourished people is, is highest. So last year, FAO's flagship report on uh, the state of food security and nutrition in the world found that there's actually an increase uh, from seven, 777 million to 850 million, 15 million. So that's, that's really an increasing decline, which is really concerning. Um, FAO identified also conflict as one of the key drivers of um, pushing the boundaries of food insecurity further. And uh, one needs to keep in mind that not only natural hazard and conflict are um, already severe, it's, it's actually um, that climate change is even increasing the, the food security um, and, and climate related shocks basically. Um, so, be, so FAO considers that if um, the 1.5 to 2 degrees scenario that was negotiated with the Paris Agreement is not held, that um, and also IPC um, in the last report emphasized that we, we move towards a increased um, a severe situation in terms of food systems. Right? What is important to say is that uh, everybody is affected, but not everybody in the same way. So, uh, regarding your question, in particular, women, indigenous peoples, and, and rural people, and women headed households, households they are particularly affect, affected by climate change. So, that's why it's really important to understand their costs and, and their needs and gaps. Um, what we also need to keep in mind is uh, the Sustainable Development Agenda, uh, which says leave no one behind. So um, in that way, uh, this response needs to be um, differentiated depending on the different vulnerable groups. What is also important uh, to mention is that uh, research actually shows by targeting the right people that you can make a large impact. For example, um, it, it is at the moment uh, the case that 43% uh, of women um, depend on livelihoods coming from the agriculture sectors, but they only own like um, uh, 10 to 20 percent of their land, and also they only receive 7 percent of the investment. So, if you, for example, would target women um, as a group and consider gender aspects, you can eventually might have a large impact on increasing resilience and um, adaptive capacities. Estimates that uh, above 80% um, of uh, rural farms are on less than two hectares. Right. So keeping that in mind, uh, smallholders are actually they can be come and they're totally uh, totally undervalued as key drivers of change. Huh? So there's a lot of talk as well here on transformational change, but often it's forgotten that the key drivers are smallholder agriculture. So yes, by by their day-to-day -day decision, they're actually determining how much. Um, mitigation and adaptation action can be put forward. So, so we, we um, FAO considers that by um, targeting smallholders you can um, make a big effect and therefore a lot of um, the climate finance discussions, I mean here and uh, during the intersessional meetings um, the, there was a decision uh, confirmed um, the Coronavia joint work on agriculture that was decided in COP23 and now the, there's a Coronavia work plan and what is really key is that um, not only the technical discussions are uh, like the technical aspects are discussed but it's actually there should be a larger discussion on climate finance targeting smallholders so there, there we see um, a big um, potential. Um, what I also like to say um, that this goes along with the Gender Action Plan, which was also decided at COP23. So there, things need to be aligned, and also the question. And as I had I responded in the first, on your first question, is it's really identifying the key vulnerable groups and how um, climate is is affecting less, and also how the co-benefits, um, like the mitigation action. 
um, can be uh, considered and, and they need to be considered if you want to reach a 1.2 degrees because if agriculture is not part of the solution um, we will not, not be able to, the world will not be able to reach a 1.5 degree or 2 degree scenario.